word than uh, it's, it's a dark place. Yeah, all right. You'll be and sick they, all they, the time. They actually set themselves well. Yes. Because if you come and you receive healing and you leave and back away from the word, you made yourself vulnerable for more stuff to the end. Yes. Because uh, uh, you're not. It, it's like, okay, I heard you, Lord. It's like this. I have. It's not a fear, but that's the only way I can explain it. If I start working out, that I'm gonna be uh, six foot five, four hundred and fifty and a uh, five hundred pound tall man. I don't ever want to be that. Mm -hmm. Yep. You you understand? Yes. So if I stop working out, it stop burning calories and it stop keeping me in shape. Mm -hmm. you, you understand that? That's the same way spiritual. Yes. Yes. If you stop, that's why it put physical workout next to godly yes. workout. If you stop this in any way, you get overweighted in the negative. Yes. Yes. You, you, am I, I explaining? Oh, 100%. Okay. Understand this. We should get to a place in our walk with God when it comes to our study time and our time with Him in prayer that we are afraid not to That's do right. it. You get That's there. Right. Yes, you do. And you do get there. <laughs> That's right. I, I, I am blessed, I think, on every day that studying has always been what drove me from yeah. the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And I really do thank yeah. God. Your desire to get there. Always. Yeah. But I wasn't always to the point where I was scared not to do it. I was like, well, whatever, you know. I'm to the point now where when I oversleep, which happens, mm -hmm. it happens. It happens to everybody. It happens to everybody. I oversleep. I jump out of bed like my house is on fire. Hmm. Not because I haven't fed the dogs or I have to go pee, because I haven't studied. Yeah. And immediately, the first thing I say is, forgive me. Yeah. yeah. Because I know at That's some point. That's how you start your prayers yeah. off. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know at some point I was woken up and I rolled over. Yeah. I went back to sleep. I might not remember it, but I did. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to get to that place where you have that desire. <laughs> Your day can't be in line without it. And, and it's not only the right. it's, right. it's not only the fear, uh, you know, that you didn't get there, but your heart is sunk because you missed that moment. Yes. Yeah. So that yes. two or three hours or whatever it yes. is, you missed it, and it's like you know you can't make up time. You can't. So you start where you are and you go forward there. Yes. yes. But it's always like a sense of loss. Yes. When you wake up late. Everything is a divine appointment. Yeah. And understand that God has an appointed time to reveal certain things to you. It's only up to you to show up to get the revelation. That's right. If you don't show up, you miss it. You need and to I present can tell yourself you, before God. What's that? You need to present yourself before God yes. in the morning. There have been times where I have been working on something, I've been studying something, and I knew I was missing a piece. I knew I, I, there was a piece I couldn't get that was going to tie everything together. But I had missed study time. And it was a message I was supposed to bring. And then either Dave or Jerry has brought the message instead of me. Because I missed my moment of revelation to pull the whole study together. And God had used somebody else to do it. That's on me. And for that, I had to repent. <clears throat> We're going to jump to verse 35. Because you need to see, verse 35 is a warning. It says, take heed, and whenever you see that, that's a warning. Yeah. Remember I said that darkness covers itself or, or, or manifests as light, or it wouldn't be appealing. Take mm -hmm. heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. Make sure that the eye you're using is the right eye. And that you're only letting in light and not darkness. 2 Corinthians 11, 14 and 15. Same light that we've been talking about is where it says, even Satan can transform himself into an angel of light. Not just Satan, but his ministers, which are his servants as well. If they can trick you like the woman in the garden into taking darkness in, thinking it was light, what state does that leave you in? 
dry. It's going to confuse you. It's going to make you ashamed. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But if you let in darkness, you are now ashamed again, even though you didn't know you did it. You have to be able to tell the difference between light and dark. And it's easy. Just make sure you're using the right eye. I'm going to give you some verses, and I'm not going to go there for, for time's sake. But you can tie all this in with Proverbs 4.18, Proverbs 20 and 27, Isaiah 5 and 20, And I'm going to wrap this up, but I, I'm not going to go deep in this for you because we're not going to get to the end. So maybe some other time. Remember the title of this message was Bright Lights, Big City, right? Mm -hmm. We said in the beginning that Jesus said, says himself, and I will give you, I am the bright and morning star, right? In Revelation 2 and 28, it says, and I will give you the morning star, correct? Mm -hmm. The morning star is a reflection of the glory of God. Of God. It's a state of perfection. If you're in a state of perfection reflecting his glory, there is no darkness dwelling within you. Remember, I said that Luke 11 you <coughs> that as a prophecy. Yes. Right? Because your whole body can't be full of light right now. That's right. But it will be. You will be a bright light, a morning star, in a big city, which is called New Jerusalem, which is Revelation 21, 10 and 11, Isaiah 62 and 12, Zechariah 8, 3, watch the video. Matthew 4 and 5, Psalm 46 and 4, and Revelation 22. That's a great study for you to do on your own. But when you are full of light, you are part of New Jerusalem.